we've heard a lot about some of the ways that large language models are helping companies. I mean, it seems to be in the news every day. Uh, I think something a lot of people are curious about is what doesn't work and how we overcome those issues. Um, I know you guys all come from a range of industries, but uh, maybe they're similar throughout, maybe they're different. If you could touch on that. Yeah, so I would start. I think the, there are a couple of things everyone need to be careful about when going this route is, number one is, we spoke about use cases. Not every use case is AI use case. If you have an option to go, you know, deterministic route, something which can be directly fetched from API, you know, always build a model, that modular that you can get it directly from API and not use AI. And if I talk about AI, one thing we are realizing, and this actually happened within the, uh, within the same year, like earlier this year, we were talking about RAG is the golden pill for everything. But now what, reali what we are realizing is RAG is not the solution for everything. Um, a lot of things that doesn't work is one of the thing is latency. RAG, if, if just for everyone's knowledge, it's retrieval augmented generation. So the whole concept is we are sending a query, but we will, we will just retrieve the information from internal database, and then we are just going to send it to LLMs. Um, but there is a whole latency around it. There is, um, there is a, what do you say, um, you know, a stochastic aspect of it, uh, which is not working very well in RAG. And then, you know, the fine tuning and few other aspects is like knowledge ingestion. Um, now the post training is coming, which are better solutions. So I think it's just constantly evolving, but there are few things which are as is, people have been trying to do last, you know, one year, one and a half year. They are, they are finding that it's not working that way. Um, uh, so, so, so I think rags are are uh, are awesome, but I agree with you. I think the the latency and some of the other operational factors is is uh, limiting uh, kind of rags rags a little bit. Uh, and this is where everyone comes and says, okay, what if I can actually fine tune my own model? What if I actually get this large language model and fountain into my to my use case? Uh, technically, it works, and it, it is great. But the part of it that doesn't work is that in order for you to fine tune a model, you need a lot of data, you need clean data, you need labeled data, you need all those magical things that goes with data that still costs a lot, and it is still not fully existent in all the enterprises. So although fine tuning models is great and it works, I think we are being limited by the quality of our clean data uh, in, that, in that area. Yeah, I would particularly echo uh, the last two things and, and what Darius said about uh, the data. Um, so you know, for all the excitement about senior data scientists in the room, I think it's more about senior data janitors that are more needed in, in reality. Um, uh, but there's another fundamental issue with things like retrieval augmented generation that creates a lot of excitement, uh, or, or even with graph added to that, and all those latest developments, is that they work great in a demo setting and great when you do very specific use case deployment. But I would say they don't generalize well. So to deploy some of those methods, you need several dozen parameters you can optimize for particular use case. And the optimization for another use case would require a very different setup. And the other great irony of LLMs is that actually the biggest thing that needs to be done is very deterministic in setting up the structure right, or even like document metadata and so on. So I, I, to me, the, the, the single biggest issue is this general application versus use case specific deployment. Yeah, I, my opinion on this is that RAG will only take us so far. And what people will ultimately end up doing, and it's not cost effective today, but will be in the future, is doing much more extensive, more than fine tuning, not starting from scratch, but starting from uh, a, a tuned model and taking it much further by putting it through a training cycle, which includes all the data within the enterprise. To do that today would cost tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. And is much more than what people mean when they say fine tuning. But as things scale, as the algorithms get more efficient, as the uh, uh, GPUs become less expensive, I would think that within five years that will be feasible and it will solve a lot of problems because you'll end up getting something which has the same behavior 
as something like ChatGPT does on public data with your internal data. But that's often the future. Another thing, which I don't think will be solved so easily, is people expect AI to have a certain amount of wisdom, which it doesn't have. So an example I like to give is, would you trust a, um, a language model to tell you whether you should marry someone or not? Or I think just think about that for a minute. Or if you would go into a merger, or if you would, any large uh, decision-making process which requires the incorporation of more than what logic and reasoning these models have now. And people, not everyone realizes that, and they expect it to be a source of intelligence. And sometimes people conflate uh, the amount of knowledge that it has with its ability to reason. And reasoning is improving a little bit with chain of thought, and the O1 model shows that. But it's still not at the point where I would say it's anywhere near wisdom. So we have to be careful to make sure people don't look at it as a decision maker for them. And I would maybe throw a specific example uh, on this in the multimodality. So um, imagine you have a research firm who has 10,000 charts produced over years. And anybody who is in that sector can relate, oh, where is that chart we did you know, six months ago? And nobody can find it, right? Because you can't search for charts. So you can use multimodal LMs to, now if you try to use them to read the charts and give you interpretation of the data, it generates absolute nonsense. It just doesn't work. But if you ask the LLM to, in a standard format, to get the description of what it represents in a self-described way with keywords, without any reasoning, it does an amazing job. Then you can take that text data into your RAG or other database and make it searchable. Yeah. So, so to some degree, you can go there, but not the, not the reasoning part. That's a great example. 